Welcome to the Brandstand Woodwind Shop. The customer wants me to replace the lead pipe on this trumpet. I will show you how to do that. First I have to start by pulling off the old lead pipe. I'm going to pull off the finger hook first. I'll get that up to temperature. You know it's up to temperature when you can see little uh, beads of solder coming out of there. Now I need to pull off the receiver. I'm going to use a mouthpiece to help me with that. I'm going to, once it heats up, I'm going to put the mouthpiece in there. I want the receiver to come off the brace. Okay, there it's up to temperature. And I also want it to come off of the lead pipe. Okay, when it's up to temperature, this is going to... It should twist off. Okay, there it goes. I'm going to take the mouthpiece and receiver and put that off to the side while I wait for that to cool off. While that is cooling off, I'm going to work on pulling off the rest of the lead pipe. So there are just two more joints here to do. Okay, now that is off. Now I have to get the lead pipe out of the slide. And I'm going to try to keep that slide soldered on if I can. It might come loose, but I'm going to try to get it off without unsoldering that. And that will make it easier to reinstall the other lead pipe. There we go. The mouthpiece and receiver are cooled off. I'm going to try to get that apart, but usually it's stuck and it is now, so I figured it would be, so I got out the mouthpiece puller, and I'm going to use that to get these unstuck. Now I need to clean the solder off of the receiver, so I'm going to heat that up to temperature, and when I see it melting, I'm going to wipe it off, and Usually it takes a few times to do that. Okay, that looks good. And now, the inside of the receiver, I need to get the solder out of there. So I'm going to do that with a cotton swab. This is the Allied Universal lead pipe. It comes from Allied Supply, and this works for almost any student model instrument. And it does not come with the finger hook or the receiver, so you have to take those off and use them on this. Most receivers on student model instruments are cut on the inside in such a way that you put the lead pipe in, and it goes right up to where it's supposed to go, and then it stops. So you just need to put the receiver up until it stops, and then solder it on. On professional level instruments, the gap between the end of the mouthpiece and the end of the lead pipe is very important. When you buy a lead pipe for a professional level trumpet, usually it also comes with the receiver and the outer slide already attached to it. And the correct mouthpiece gap has already been set, so usually you do not need to worry about that when you buy professional level lead pipes. The next step is something you don't really need to do, but I'm going to do it. Uh, you notice that this is a little bit loose, so I'm going to tighten this up. And the way I'm going to do that is shrink it. I have the tubing burnisher, and I have the correct size one. And I'm going to squeeze this in the vise, and that should close it up enough so that it will fit on there more snugly. That will make the solder on straight, and it will be a lot easier to work with. You need clean surfaces for solder to stick on the inside of the receiver, so I'm going to clean that up. There's a rod with some sandpaper on the end. And that cleans up the inside of the receiver. I'm finally ready to start soldering, so I'm going to put that to where it needs to be, and then I'm going to put it on there to hold it together while I solder. I need some fire. And then when it's warm, I'll put some flux on there. Then you heat it up. Then you heat it up for a little while until the solder starts flowing. And I'm heating it up down towards the middle of the receiver because that helps the solder to flow into the receiver. Okay, that's good. A little more. Okay. 
And that is done. Allied Universal lead pipes are made long, so you need to cut them. So I'm going to see how much I need to cut. If I line up the old lead pipe to the tuning side, you can see that there is that much gap. So I do have a little bit of space to work with when I cut this one. What I'm going to do is line up the two lead pipes and I can tell where it needs to be by where the solder joint is. And then I'm going to take the poker and I'm going to mark where I need to cut it. And I do have a little bit of extra space so I am adding a little bit on here. This is a tubing cutter and it's a standard one like a plumber would use. So I'm going to line that up and cut the tubing. The tubing cutter leaves burrs inside of the lead pipe, so I'm going to clean out those burrs with the triangular knife. The tubing cutter also tapers in the metal a little bit, so I have a mandrel and I'm going to expand that, or not really expand it, but make it to like it was before. And that's about all that takes to do that. There are a few things to watch out for when you're soldering. First of all, these two tubes need to be parallel and not skewed. And you can do that with the tuning slide. If the tuning slide is parallel and not skewed, then when you put it in here, those will be also. In this video, I'm not going to get into slides that are skewed and not parallel, but it makes it a lot easier if they are good. If the tube is off, then there is an extra step, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. After you've done that, there are a few more things to watch out for. You, when you put the tube into the trumpet, you can use the old solder joint to line up where the new lead pipe should go. So you put that on there. And then also you need to make sure that the slide can go in all the way. If this tube is too long, it's going to hit the slide and it will not go in all the way. Also, when you're soldering, if the slide is pushed in all the way, you might get some solder that goes onto the tube in there and then that will solder the slide shut. So when you solder, pull the slide out a little bit. And then one more thing to look out for. When you're soldering, there should be as little gap as possible. And you can see that there is a gap right here. So what I'm going to do is bend this brace to make it fit. Usually you can just do that with your hands. Just push on that a little bit. Sometimes when you do it, you can lose the solder joint, so keep an eye on that. You may just need to solder that again. If you do, it's not really that hard. Okay, I need to bend it a little more. That is good. There's not much gap here, and also there's no gap here. So this lead pipe is ready to solder. Everything is lined up like it should be, so all I need to hold it is one solder clip, and that should hold it into place. If the outer slide tube or one of these braces was unsoldered, you would need more solder clips, but when you do it this way, you only need one. I have three solder joints to solder. I'm going to solder this one first, this one second, and then this one third. I'm going to turn the trumpet over and get the solder joint from the underside so that if it gets messed up a little bit, it should not be as big of a problem. Or you won't be able to see it well, as well, at least. So you have to heat it up and wait for it to get up to temperature. And then watch the solder. Okay, the solder flowed in there. Okay, that's good. I said that there are three solder joints. Actually, there's a fourth solder joint, and that's the finger hook. So what I'm going to do is see where the finger hook lined up on the old lead pipe. I'm going to put that in the same place, right there. While I have the metal heated up right in that vicinity, I'm going to do the finger hook too. Remember to have the tuning side pulled out when you do this solder joint. Now in this video I'm not going to get into soldering very much and that's because I have several other videos having to do with soldering. So if you're replacing a lead pipe I'm going to assume that you know a little bit about soldering already. And if you do not, uh, feel free to watch those videos. And soldering is an art but it's an art that's not too hard to learn. So if you are interested in learning how to solder I suggest that you watch those videos and uh, and usually you can learn fairly easily and it's not that expensive either. You just need a torch, solder, and flux and a few other tools. Another thing very important when you're soldering tubing is to make sure that the solder goes all the way around and it did not go all the way around. So there is a little bit of a leak right there. 
on the solder joint. So I'm going to solder that again and make sure that the solder goes into that gap this time. A little bit more heat and a little bit more flux and a little bit more solder. Okay, that looks good. Now there's just one more solder joint. Before I solder that, I'm going to use my flange burnisher to make sure that the flanges are right up against the lead pipe. There is a little bit of gap right there. So, there, I bent that up so it makes contact with the lead pipe. And one more solder joint. I think I got a little too much solder on that one, so that's going to require a little bit of cleanup. And I checked the bottom to make sure that the solder went all the way around, and it did. So that is good. Now I'm going to neutralize the flux so that it stops acting. And it's four parts water to one part ammonia. That neutralizes the acid in the flux so that it does not keep acting on the metal. If you made a mess with the solder, or you just put a little too much solder on there, now it's time to clean up those joints. And I actually did add a little too much solder on, uh, I think, all of the joints. Uh, it's, I will admit, it is a little harder to solder for an audience than it is to solder just by yourself with nobody watching. So, yeah, usually when I get a video of me soldering, it does not turn out quite as well is when I am just soldering with nobody around. So let's see here. Another little blob of solder. Not a big blob, just a little blob. I'll take care of that. Okay, that looks good. The rest can be buffed off easily. Something that is very important to do is to check for air leaks. Put your finger on the end of the tube and then feel for any air coming out of the solder joints and there is no leak on this one. If there is a leak, you'll need to figure out which joint it is and then put some more solder on it. Now I need to buff and lacquer the lead pipe. I'm going to start with a triple E buffing compound. I'm not going to go into detail on buffing in this video. Uh, I have done other videos on buffing. But I will leave links to those videos in the description below. Starting with a triple E buffing compound, and then that gives you a rough polish. And then after that, I'm going to go to the red buffing compound, and that gives you a nice smooth surface, and it makes it very shiny. I'm also trying to buff off the excess solder. I did clean that up, but it does leave a very thin layer of solder on it, and it buffs off very easily. That's about all I'm going to get with the buffing wheel, so I'm going to move over to the vise. This is a wicking material, and this is the Tripoli buffing compound. So I'm going to put some on that, and I'm going to use that to finish up the buffing. I'm going to use this to get where the buffing wheel could not get at. What I'm looking for is to get rid of all of the oxidation, and that's kind of the pinkish stuff, and also all of the solder that's where it's not supposed to be. I wiped off the residue on the lead pipe with a cloth, and now I'm switching over to the Red Rouge buffing compound. And I'm going to use the wicking material first this time, and then after I'm done with that, I'm going to go over to the buffing wheel and finish it up. Before I lacquer it, I'm going to clean up the Red Rouge residue with some cold degreaser. Now the trumpet is ready to lacquer. I'm going to use the Nicholas spray lacquer. I get this from Allied Supply. This works well for canned lacquer. If you have the sprayer in the oven, that works a lot better, but on a job like this, canned lacquer is usually okay. Normally I'd go outside to lacquer, but as you can see, it's kind of cold outside right now. Too cold to lacquer. So I'm going to lacquer in the airlock entry of my shop. And the reason you want to go outside is this stuff is very stinky and probably not the best to breathe it. So 
I'm going to try to breathe this as little as possible. It's about 10 minutes later. I'm going to do the second coat of lacquer, and then this will be done. The lacquer is dry, and now the lead pipe is finished, and that is what it looks like. I hope this video has been helpful. Look in the description below for links to related videos, and please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.